find the area underneath the curve 3x squared plus 1 between 0 and 2. It might be helpful to think of this as f of x equals 3x squared plus 1. 0 and 2, that's going to be your a and b. Let's start by calculating some things here. First of which is delta x. The width of each of our rectangles is going to be b minus a over n. In this case, 2 minus 0 over n or 2 over n. The next thing I'm going to calculate is uh, the point at which I'm going to find the height of my rectangles. So that's going to be c sub i equals a plus delta x times i. So 0 plus 2 over n times i. That's just 2i over n. So that's the width. The height of my rectangles isn't here. It's the function evaluated at that point. So the height is going to be f of c sub i. Let's do that calculation. So f of 2i over n is going to be 3 times 2i over n squared plus 1. Squaring that out, that's 4i squared over n squared plus 1, or better yet, 12i squared over n squared plus 1. Let's put that together now to find the area of one rectangle. So it's going to be the height times the width. So the area of one rectangle. You don't necessarily have to make a separate show of this on your work, but I will here just so that I can try and keep our thoughts organized. It's going to be the height times the width. And that expression would look like 12i squared over n squared plus 1 times the width. Now let's be careful, the width isn't this. The width is this one right here. That's your width. So times 2 over n. And let's distribute that and clean this up a little bit before we put it in a summation and try and find the area. So distributing that gives me 24i squared over n cubed plus 2. Good question. It's 2 over n. 2i over n is the point where you're finding the height, but the width is just 2 over n. Yeah. Good question. So this is the area of one triangle. If I want, or one rectangle. If I wanted to find the area of all such rectangles, I would add them up using our summation notation. So the sum from i equals 1 to n. So this is just the ith rectangle. Let's, let's do it for all of them. 24i squared over n cubed plus 2 over n. Now that sum is just an approximation of the area. That sum is going to be a better and better approximation the more and more rectangles you're going to use. So how do you use more rectangles? Well, you take the limit as n approaches infinity. As n approaches infinity, the width of your rectangles is going to go to zero. And the error that you make in this approximation is also going to go to zero. So we want to calculate the limit as n approaches infinity of this expression. So sum from i equals 1 to n of 24i squared over n cubed plus 2 over n. Here's where we're going to try and use our formulas. So let me split this up a little bit. I'm going to split this up into the limit as n approaches infinity. I'm going to use brackets here. I'm going to split that summation up into two sums. But within that first sum, 
there's a lot of stuff that doesn't depend on i. So the 24 and the n cubed can come out in front. So 24 over n cubed times the sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared. Plus, you know, this one's friendly enough that we'll just kind of leave it alone. The sum from i equals 1 to n of 2 over n. Mm, 3n. Uh, I didn't have to. Um, I, I could have taken it out and left a 1 here. So, it's, yeah, it's just a different, diff different problem, different style. Showing you a couple different options. But I could have taken that out. Uh, but either way, though, this is a constant, right? This doesn't depend on i. So when you have the sum of a constant, what do we do? How do we find the sum of a, of a constant? Just, it's going to be n times 2 over n. The n's will cancel. Yeah, so we're going to get the same kind of thing that we did with the last one. All right, let's keep going. Limit as n approaches infinity of 24 over n cubed times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6 plus n times 2 over n. So all I did here was I filled in my formula for the sum of the first n squares. Now I get a little cancellation here, right? Let's do some cancellation for this one. Uh, the 6 cancels into 24 four times. Is there anything else that I can kind of get rid of while I'm here? All right. I can get rid of one of the ends. And then there's an N over here that I can get rid of. That's a nice and important one. These cancel. So what am I left with? I'm left with the limit as n approaches infinity of, let's see, they'd be foiling that out, that'd be 2n squared plus 3n plus 1 over n squared. I still have a 4 out in front here, right? 4 times that plus 2. What important observation can you make about this rational expression here? Powers. The powers match. That's important. If they don't match, there's something wrong, period. Because you can't have, say, for instance, the numerator bigger than the denominator. That would give you an infinite limit. All right. You're not going to have an infinite area to work with and calculate. So if these don't match, then stop. Go back. There's a mistake. Now, as far as the limit is concerned, I'm going to end up with 4 times something plus 2. What's that something there? 2. So overall, your area is 10. Yay. Looking pretty good there. Okay. Anything on problem 48? I know these are challenging problems, but if there's something about this one that's troubling you, let me know. If not, see ya. Yeah, no, 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 no homework. It's holiday weekend. Nah, I got, I got some presents for you. So, for homework, <laughs> for homework, section 5.2, try 1 through 19. 31 through 49. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Have a great weekend. See ya.